Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, and today I'm going to talk about the laws of sines and cosines. Basic trigonometry, together with the Pythagorean theorem, can be used to find the side lengths and angle measures in a right triangle. I'm not going to review basic trigonometry here, that's reserved for another video, but the important thing is, what if we want to find the side lengths and angle measures in an arbitrary triangle. Well, this is where the laws of sines and cosines can be extremely useful. Let's start with the law of sines. It says that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C, where the capital A, B, and C are the angles of the triangle, and little a, B, and C are the lengths of the sides opposite these angles in that order. Notice that little a is opposite angle big A, little b is opposite angle big B. So when you're taking these quotients, you're always using the opposite side and angle. Let's look at an example. In triangle ABC below, AB equals 12, let me label that, to the nearest tenth of an inch, BC is equal to what? Well, let's call that X. Well, let's use the law of sines. We have 12 over sine 50 degrees, that's these two, is equal to x over the sine of 60 degrees over here. And now we just solve for x. So x is equal to 12 over sine 50 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. Just put this into your calculator and you'll get approximately 13.566 and so on. To the nearest tenth, that's going to be 13.6 and that is choice D. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode when doing these computations. If you're using a TI-84 calculator, you can press the mode button and go down to the third line, make sure that degree is highlighted. If not, go to it and press enter. Let's try a harder example where the law of sines can be used. Points P and Q lie on a circle of radius 8 with center O. O, 8 and points P and Q. So let's put point P here, point Q here. The radius is eight, so both of those segments are eight. If the measure of angle OPQ is 50 degrees, so this angle is 50 degrees, and since this is an isosceles triangle, this angle is also 50 degrees. What is the length of chord PQ to the nearest tenth? Let's call that X. So it would be nice to know the angle opposite x. Well, we could get that because a triangle has 180 degrees. We already accounted for 100 degrees, so that angle is 80 degrees. So we have x over the sine of 80 degrees is equal to 8 over the sine of 50 degrees. Okay, multiply both sides of this equation by sine 80 degrees to get x equals 8 over sine 50 degrees times sine 80 degrees. Again, put this in your calculator and you'll get approximately 10.3, which is choice D. Next, let's talk about the law of cosines. The law of cosines says c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, where little a, b, and c are the lengths of the sides of the triangle, and the side of length little c is opposite angle big C. So notice over here, this side that's by itself has to be opposite the angle that's being used in the formula. Also notice that the first part of this, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, is just the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, if C is a 90 degree angle, then the last part is just equal to zero. 
Let's do an example. Triangle PQR is shown in the figure below. The measure of angle P is 32 degrees, PQ equals 9 inches, and PR equals 15 inches. Which of the following is the length in inches of QR? Let's label QR with a C, and by the law of cosines, we have C squared equals 15 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 15 times 9 cosine 32 degrees. Taking the square root of each side gives us choice E. Let's do one more example where we can use the law of cosines. What is the degree measure of the largest angle of a triangle that has sides of length 7, 8, and 9 to the nearest degree? Okay, let me draw a picture of this triangle, 7, 8, 9. We want the largest angle of the triangle. The largest angle of a triangle is always opposite the largest side. Now we use the law of cosines. We have 9 squared equals 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 cosine C. And we need to get C by itself. So let's simplify. We have 81 equals, well, 64 plus 49 is 113 minus 2 times 8 times 7 is 112 cosine C. Subtract 113 from each side to get negative 32 equals negative 112 cosine C. We now divide each side of this equation by negative 112 to get cosine C equals negative 32 over negative 112 which comes out to approximately 0.286. Finally, we need to get C by itself, and we do that by taking the inverse cosine of 0.286. We can do that in our calculator by hitting second, followed by the cosine button, and to the nearest integer, that comes out to 73 degrees.